Hey everybody, this is my 2015 Kansas State football preview. Uh, first off, an interesting fact, uh, since 2009, K-State leads the Big 12 in, turn, in turning the ball over the fewest amount of times with 101 turnovers. So K-State leads the Big 12 in that category, so that's good. Uh, the offense, uh, the offense looks pretty good. Uh, just have to replace a few good players, but other than that, the offense looks pretty good. Uh, the quarterbacks, uh, we lose Jake Waters, a very good player, and Jake Waters will be uh, hard to replace. Uh, I think there's three good, three good players uh, that would be that could be named the starting quarterback this year, and they are Alex Delton, Jesse Ertz, and Joe Eubner. And I'm sorry if I mispronounce any players' names. Uh, those three players, uh, I think, have a good chance of being na being named the starter uh, this year. Uh, but I think Joe Eubner. Joe Eubner will be named the starting quarterback this year, though. Uh, he has the most uh, game time, college game time experience, so uh, I think he'll be the name. I think he'll be named the starter uh, this year. Uh, but I think Jesse Ertz and Alex Delton has a chance of being named. Has a chance of being named the starter as well. Uh, the running backs, uh, Charles Jones. As is returning, I think is returning, returning a starter at running back. Uh, uh, he didn't start all. He didn't start start all last season, but he started most of the year last year. So, uh, but he's returning this year, and I think he'll be the starter this year. Uh, Alex uh, Barnes and. Dalvin Warmack will be the backups, uh, and I think those two players will ha will see some playing time as well. Uh, but I think uh, those two players would be the backups, uh, while Charles Jones would be the starter. Uh, and Glenn Kronkowski is returning as starter at fullback, so that's good. Uh, the receivers, uh, the the receivers are the biggest problem, uh, the biggest concern I should say on offense. Uh, we lost two of our best receivers and Tyler Lockett and Curry Sexton. And we lost our and I lost a and lost a good tight end in Zach Trujillo. And I'm sorry if I mispronounce anybody's names again. And we lost Zach Trujillo as t a tight end. So we lost three good two we lost two good receivers and our t good tight end. So, and Tyler Lockett and Curry Sexton both had each each of them had over a thousand yards receiving over a thousand receiving yards. So, uh, we lost over two thousand yards from two thousand. We lost over two thousand uh, uh, yard receivers that from last year. So. It'll be a difficult task to replace those two. Uh, there's three, I th there's three good, there's three good players, uh, receivers I think that could step up, and Kyle Klein, uh, Dante, Dante Burton, and Cody Cook. I think those those three players can step up and replace Tyler Lockett and Curry, St Curry Sexton, uh, and Kyle Klein. Is the brother of uh, Colin Klein, so uh, so those three players, I think, will step up and be good receivers this year, and replacing two great play, two great two great receivers that both had a thousand yards receiving from last year. So I think uh, those three players will step up and be good players. Uh, the offensive line. Uh, we just have to replace one player on the offensive line, and that's our great set, and that's the our our great center 
BJ Finney. He's the only player to we have to replace this year, and that'd be a difficult task. And I think uh, Dalton Wisner is up for the job. It will be perfect for the job, I should say, to replace BJ Finney. And, and that'd be a difficult task to do. And Dalton Wisner is a redshirt freshman, so that's good. Uh, returning offensive lineman, offensive lineman is Cody Whitehair, Boston Silverston, Stiverston, uh, Luke Hayes, and Matt Kleinsorge. Those are returning. That's, those are our returning linemen, offensive linemen. So uh, I think the offensive line, offensive line is our strongest unit on the offense. So there's no. I don't think there'd be. I don't think there's much worry about the offensive line. So overall, I think the offense will be fine. So and that'll be good this year. Uh, the defense uh, goes the same as the offense. Just we just have to replace a few good players. Uh, other than that, the defense is fine. Uh, the defensive line, uh, we just lost. A really good player in Ryan Mueller. Uh, he, he'll, he'll, he'll be missed uh, on the defensive line, but I think the players we got will step up and fill the void that he left. So, uh, the f four players on the line are uh, Jordan Rillis, Travis Britz, Will Geary, Geary, and Markel Bryant. So, those players will be good this year, and so the defensive line is pretty good. Uh, the linebackers, uh, we we lost a very good player in Jonathan Truman. Uh, he'll be missed as well. Uh, uh, the, uh, the returning returning linebackers are Elijah Lee and Will Davis, and the. And we have good backup players and linebacker and uh, I'm sorry for for mispronouncing this name is Char Char Mitchell Moore and Sam Sizlov. Those are the ba good backups. Good backups and we have good starters and Elijah Lee and Will Davis and and John. Jonathan Truman will be missed at linebacker. Uh, the defensive backs, uh, uh, we have uh, Dante Barnett, Denzel McDonald, McDaniel, excuse me, and Morgan Burns. And there's uh, Caleb Pruitt, Sean Newland, and Nate Jackson as uh, back as backups, and the defensive backs and and the secondary uh, the secondary is probably the uh, best unit in the on defense so uh, so overall uh, the defense will be fine uh, just we have to replace a few players like I said but I think the defense will be fine and they'll be good uh, special teams uh, we returned both our starting kickers from last year, and Jack Gantelli and Matthew McCrane. Uh, they both returned this year. Uh, I think Matthew McCrane took over the kicking duties after the Auburn game, I think, but I'm not sure. But I knew he took the starting the starting duties at some time during the last year, but I think it was after the Auburn game. So, but both of our kickers return from last year. Our, our punter returns from last year, and Nick Walsh, he's, he returns this year. Uh, our, return, our kick and punt returners, uh, we have to replace a very good uh, return man and Tyler Lockett. But I think we have good players to do that. And Morgan Burns, Jordan Jones, and oh, J Judah Jones, excuse me, and Delvin Warmack. Those three play. 
Morgan Burns, Judo Jones, and Delvin Warmack are very good players to to replace Tyler Lockett as kick and punt returner. So those are those players will be good. So uh, the special teams is is really good. There's no need no need to worry about the special teams. So uh, overall, the special teams is fine. Uh, overall, the special uh, the offense, defense, and special teams will be good this year. Just we'll, we'll just miss the good players we lost from last year. So overall, uh, our the offense, defense, and special teams is fine, and they'll be good. Now on to the schedule. Uh, our first game is against South Dakota. I think we'll roll over. Roll, uh, roll past South Dakota. And our next game is at uh, is at University of Texas San Antonio, and in San Antonio, uh, that's our we're returning back to San Antonio after the we're making a return trip to San Antonio after our bowl game last year. So that'll be fun. Uh, then after that, we got Louisiana Tech. Uh, I think this is our toughest non-conference game. Uh, I think Louisiana Tech will put up a good a good fight, but I think we'll have a a decent decent point a decent win over Louisiana Tech. Then we got a bye, and after that we're at Oklahoma State. Uh, I think we'll still win from Oklahoma State and. Uh, and win our and win and beat Oklahoma State. Uh, uh, we haven't beaten Oklahoma State and Stillwater since '99, so uh, I think we'll steal one from Oklahoma State and beat them. Then after that, we got TCU. I think we'll. I think TCU is uh, more. Uh, I think TCU is way better than us this year. This this year, so I think TCU will win. Uh, uh, Oklahoma is after that and we have a chance of stealing one from Oklahoma but I think Oklahoma will beat us uh, I think Oklahoma will beat us uh, but we have a chance of beating them this year I think we have a chance of beating them uh, but K-State hasn't hasn't beaten uh, an Oklahoma, uh, Bob Stoops uh, co Bob Stoops coached Oklahoma team and Manhattan ever so uh, so I think this will uh, but I think Oklahoma will beat us this year but I think we have a chance then after that we're at Texas uh, I think we'll, that I think either team can win this game but I think we'll beat Texas this year then we get a bye then after the bye we we got Baylor on a Thursday night, uh, and I think Baylor will beat us again, but we, I think we have a small chance of beating them, a really small chance, but I think Baylor will beat us. Uh, and our next four games are pretty good, pretty easy games, I think, uh, the next four games are winnable, I think. Uh, then we got, at after Baylor, we got at Texas Tech, I think we'll... Him, I think we'll beat him again. Then we got Iowa State. I think we'll beat him again in a close game. I think. Then, then we got at Kansas. I think we'll roll over him again. And our final final game of the season, regular season, is West Virginia. And I think we'll uh, uh, squeak back. I think we'll. Uh, beat West Virginia in a close game as well, in a close game, so uh, for this year I have K-State going 9-3, and 6-3 uh, and three in the conference uh, the worst the worst case scenario I, I have us going is 7-5 and five with a 4-5 and five conference record and the best case, best case scenario is 10-2 and two with a 7-2 and two conference record, but Honestly, I think uh, K State can go nine and three this year with a six and three conference record. So, uh, so that's 
that's it for my uh, preview. So that's it for me. So see you guys later and go state and emo.